Hi everyone. In this video I'm just going to recall what the law of cosines is and we'll also give a proof of it. So the law of cosines concerns a triangle and we've labeled here the interior angles capital A, capital B, and capital C and the lengths of the sides opposite those angles we've indicated by little a, little b, and little c. And what the law of cosines is, well it gives us a relationship between one of the angles and the lengths of the three sides. Now you can think of the law of cosines as just a general version of the Pythagorean theorem. So let's just recall the Pythagorean theorem. What does it say? The Pythagorean theorem says you've got a right triangle side uh, hypotenuse has side length C and then maybe A and B are our other two sides and it says that C squared is equal to A squared plus B squared. This is actually just a special case of the law of cosines or another way to say that is the law of cosines is a more general version of the Pythagorean theorem. Well why is that? Well the Pythagorean theorem is saying take capital C to be 90 degrees the law of cosines says well now let's consider what happens when this angle C is not 90 degrees. In the case that it's not 90 degrees, we have this extra adjustment term that needs to be thrown in. And you can see that when C is 90 degrees, cosine of 90 degrees, or cosine of pi by 2, is 0. So that term goes away when it's a right triangle. But when it's not a right triangle, we need to keep that term. So the law of cosines is just a general version of the Pythagorean theorem. It says that C squared is equal to A squared plus B squared plus this little adjustment term involving the angle C and those two sides next to it. Now in order to prove the law of cosines, we just have to use the Pythagorean theorem. And the way we do that is we take our triangle, our general triangle here, and try to extract from it a couple of right triangles that will help us figure things out. So let's go ahead and prove the law of cosines. Now to start with, it helps if we reorient our triangle on the coordinate system where we take that point at C, the angle C, and stick it at the origin. And in my picture I'm just going to draw a triangle where the angle C is less than 90 degrees. So our general triangle you know, looks something like this. So there's our triangle. And so this is going to be angle capital C, so that means that's length little c, this is length b, and this is length a. And then we've got our corresponding capital A angle here and capital B angle here. Now what we do is we're going to drop a perpendicular line down. We're going to cut our triangle into two right triangles. So I drop a perpendicular line down from this point. And then I just work out various lengths. And in order to work out those lengths, I just write down what the coordinates of this point is up here. The coordinates of that point is given by B cosine of angle C and B sine of angle C. So that means that this distance here is equal to B cos of C. And the height is B sine of C. So that was using the information involving in that, involved in that first triangle. So I'll call that triangle one. We just used that information to get those two bases and those heights. Now I'm going to go to work on triangle two. What do I get from triangle two? So from triangle two, we apply Pythagoras, the Pythagorean theorem. And what does Pythagoras tell us? Well, it tells us that c squared is equal to b sine c all squared, b sine c all squared, plus this length here, this length here. And what is that length? Well, the full length is a, this shorter length is b cos c, so this length has to be a minus b cos c. So this is a minus b cos c all squared. So let's just recap. We cut our triangle up. In the first triangle, we use trigonometry to find the coordinates of that point and therefore find the, the base here and the height. 
And in the second triangle, we use Pythagoras to find the relationship between their side lengths. Here's our relationship, and we're essentially done. Because now when we expand this out, b squared sine squared c plus a squared minus 2ab cos c. Oh, that cross term, that's the 2ab cos c. That's that adjustment term that we needed. And then the last product is b squared cos squared c, and I see that this term and this term combine together, because sine squared plus cos squared is 1, they combine together to give me just b squared. So this is a squared plus b squared minus 2ab cos c, and that's c squared, and that's what we wanted to prove. So there's the proof of the law of cosines. Now you may say, well, it looks like you've only proved it when c is less than 90 degrees. Well, the argument actually works when c is bigger than 90 degrees. It's just I had to draw the diagram to sort of extract this information out. So I had to pit, make a choice in drawing my diagram. But we can draw a similar diagram when the angle c is bigger than 90 degrees and see that everything works out just fine. When c is bigger than pi by 2, our diagram looks like this. So here's our angle C, and there's our length little c, here's our length little a, here's our length little b. What do we do? Well, we drop a perpendicular down again from that point. So we've got this point here, we drop a perpendicular down. It just so happens that when I drop this perpendicular down, it doesn't cut the triangle into two pieces. It actually introduces this extra little bit so that now my two triangles weren't making up my original triangle, but they still share the common lengths that I want. So we've got this first right triangle, and then this bigger right triangle, which I'm going to call triangle 2. In triangle 1, well, I still get the coordinates of this point. That's b cos c, b sine c. Using those, I can get the height here. That's b sine c. And using that first coordinate, that x-coordinate, I can get the length here. This is where I just have to be careful, though. b cos c is negative, because it's the x-coordinate of that point, which is now over here along the negative x-axis. So what is this distance? This distance is negative b cos c, because the distance here is going to be a positive number. I want to work out the distance along the entire base of this big triangle, so it's going to be a plus this quantity here, which is now positive, negative b cos c. So the full distance here is a minus b cos c. And we see that's exactly what it was back here. They're the same. The height, well, it's still the same, b sine c. And the hypotenuse of this triangle, too, it's still the same. So if we apply Pythagorean theorem, everything's the same. So now the argument is the same as above. Argument is same as above. Okay, so everything works out. Even though it looked like I just proved it for the case when c was less than 90 degrees, or less than pi by 2, same argument works when it's bigger than pi by 2 as well. All right, so that's the law of cosines.